we're really excited to welcome Dave Middlebrook, who pioneered the technique of text mapping and the use of scrolls as a way of liberating texts from the confines of the book format. Text mapping was born out of his own experiences with specific learning disabilities and his desire to help others access and enter into dialogue with the texts they encounter. So thank you very much, Dave, for joining us today. Thank you, and thank you for having me. I think maybe we could start uh, with you explaining to our listeners how text scrolling works and how all this text mapping originated, uh, uh, what gave rise to all these ideas. That sounds good. And just to the audience, let know we're having some technical challenges this morning, probably our problem, not the technology, but you know, and uh, so if you see them waving their hands at the screen, that's their signal to me to hit the unmute button. And uh, that seems to be working for us. So I'm gonna <clears throat> start my demo here. Um, oh, can I share, can I share my screen for a moment? Absolutely, With, absolutely. Good, good. Uh, let's see. We can't hear you though. Hey, are we working now? All yes, right, I'm not going to yes. be, I guess I'm not going to be able to share the screen successfully. So we're not going to worry about that. I'll move on. Okay, um, okay. But what I wanted to show you on the screen is there's a certain view that you get. Um, it's uh, from my perspective, it's, uh, it's worse than the book because with, uh, with the, the pages, Of course, I, I thought I would share the screen view first, but we have the next piece of it. This is what you probably print out. And um, you find yourself going, there you go, one page at a time, you know. And it's, it's difficult to read this from my point of view and many of your students. And I should say that really, I'm just like one of your students fast forwarded another 30 years or something. So think of it that way and you'll realize the potential benefit here. Uh, there we go. And here's an improvement. Here's, in essence, kind of like a magazine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. format, bound book format, okay? But you can only see two pages at a time. That's all you're ever going to see. And if you literally comprehend to grasp the whole, how do you do it with two pages at a time? And this is the undiscovered question before my work was it, how how do you do this and how do you communicate to your students what you need to do to understand this text mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. and uh i was in law school i was i made an attempt at law school at one point and i was working on an assignment early on in my in my very short career there and uh i was totally frustrated it was just six pages I had to digest and I couldn't make any sense of it. Finally, out of total frustration, I threw the textbook on my, onto my cot machine or I put it, I placed it there gently and I hit this hit print button and I printed out two copies. So I would have all face up and I laid them out in scroll form and I taped them all together. And what I got was, Essentially this, this is not the, the piece that I did before. This is the article that I did with Tom, Sandra, and, and Sandra Sinfield, Sandra Beglin, and Tom Burns. And I, I'm eternally grateful for them to uh, inviting me to partner with them on this because it's been terribly hard to get published otherwise. So this is the piece. And now you can see the whole. You can walk across it, which you can't do in a book. All you can do is sit. Here, it's very physical. Very multi-sensory, and it's a great way to see that that here's the beginning, and here's the end, and that's pretty much what there is, mm -hmm. as opposed to paging through incessantly, or even more favorably to paper, but still paging through it, and you don't really have an idea where you are unless you have, if you have learning disabilities like memory problems like mine, as soon as I turn the page, it's all gone. I have no recollection. Um, it's very difficult to assemble any kind of understanding of a text. It's not a problem with fiction because nobody cares, but uh, you know, unless you're studying it. But um, so anyway, 
I created this scroll out of the paper that we got, and I thought I would show you quickly how I treat it. And you can start anywhere you want here. It's a scroll. And I draw a box around this. This is my way of saying this is an entire document. And you'll notice I don't care too much about whether the lines are straight. I don't use rulers. And I think, can you see that? I, you can see that I drew the line. Can you see the line in the camera? Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, I've got, I've got the boldest uh, markers I can use, unfortunately. And there's another piece up here, which actually belongs. It starts on page 8 and ends on page 12. And that's over here. So what I did was I took the references, in essence, the back matter of the text, and I moved it up here. Uh, well, the brown is not happy with me, so I use brown too much. There we go. Orange. Don't mind orange so much. So this whole piece here fits down in this article. But actually, I see my stuff cited right here. And it goes up here. So those are all my texts that are cited mm -hmm. that will be used in this article, OK? And if I were working on this, it'd be helpful to know how this connects to this, like scrolls versus conventional academic text formats. That's, a, that's part of the article that I, I was largely responsible for. Not a lot, but these feed into that. And they also feed in elsewhere. Um, but you can also, let's see here, I got that done. This is the front matter here. And the article really begins here with the introduction. So I can do this and say, there's the heading. There's a heading. There's a heading. There's one there. A longer section. Look at that. It was all short stuff. And here's a longer section here. All right, talking about the PG search class at, at uh, London Met and conclusion. And you see that there's a conclusion and there's an introduction. Not all texts are structured that way, but academic texts are for sure. And um, everything in between there is the, really the main information. And this is kind of a summary of what you're going to hit. And this is a summary of what you did hit and what we think about it. You can go, well, let's see if there's anything else I could do. Yeah, the back matter here is actually divided into two sections. The first section starts here with references. This is all the way over here to all over the details, and this one's running out too. Put that down. Okay, and the last, the, the last piece of this is author details. There's right here. Now, I bet you if your students were reading this article, they would pass their eyes over this. They wouldn't be able to understand how it was important. And, but this way, with the scroll, you can, because as you work, you can look at the cited, the, the cited works, and you can see how they relate. And you can ask questions, and, and you can answer your questions. And you have a dialogue with other people about this. So, and the author details, they might just skip that. But it's here, kind of nagging you while you have a scroll. It's just tapping you on the shoulder incessantly and saying, did you pay attention to that? Did you pay attention to this section here? This is a, a long section, you know. It's the longest section in the piece. Maybe it's got a lot more to say. 
certainly is important in our PG cert, how we unroll the text. So this is where they implemented it. And uh, well, you could just, you could go on and on in this. Oh, I know, I haven't showed you. I like to draw boxes around things, which is why it's called text mapping. It is not highlighting, which is like, you know, you're, you're, you're pulling stuff in the text and in essence, you could highlight these things. But I'm drawing boxes around stuff and it's not because I'm crazy. It's the, the idea is as you work with your hands, you are forming a sensory memory, a feeling of the structure of this text. Mm -hmm. Now it looks pretty messy. Hope you can see it. Now, if you don't trust me, it looks very messy. But this is a thought process. This is not, we're not producing a finished thing for item to be shared in ood and ah over. This is your thinking. So it can be as messy as it needs to be. Translation, don't spend a lot of time trying to make it look pretty. Do what you have to do to understand what's in there. This is the longer section. And then their analysis, what the lecture did, the case study within. And then in conclusion. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and then a little coda here. I'll talk about in that six sections. <laughs> this is very helpful. When, and when a student like me opens a text like that, I have no idea how many pages I'm going to suffer through. I mean, it's painful. It, it, it's really difficult. So it is important to know how much is ahead of me. Here, I know. And I'm not forced. I can jump anywhere in the text. I can move back and forth continuously and talk about it and, and share my thoughts with other people. And it's very helpful. That's really, it's all but impossible to do in this format. Mm -hmm. You're just blocked. Every page, every, every two page, two pages is separated from all the others by at least one turn. So it's very, for, for me, it's very difficult. For a lot of people, it's very difficult. I think you'd be surprised how many of your students will see this. And certainly, you might too. But, and and um, I think that this is probably a good place to look at what uh, Tom and Tom and Sandra and Sandra wrote. In conclusion, they said typically our non-traditional undergraduate students, by non-traditional they're talking about students who have home, they're a little older and they have home commitments, all kinds of stuff to deal with. So typically, I'm gonna put this over here, I'm a little off camera. There you go. So typically, and this is the takeaway I think, our non-traditional undergraduate students feel excluded and are positioned as excluded by the university's habitus and particularly by the power and discourse of academic reading. And I would put at the head of that is the book because that controls every interaction with that text inside, everyone, as the scroll does. We found that when using the bound, the, the bound text, the codex, unbound, as in taking it apart and assemble as a scroll, our staff and their students experienced an embodied way, very physical, it's embodied, that academic reading could be dialogic. It's opening the possibilities for all this, cooperative and discursive. You can wander around freely and not waste a lot of time. Unrolled text scrolls offer a powerful learning experience de facto position, by de facto positioning readers, uh, readers differently towards a text. So that's the takeaway of it. And that's my short demo. I must tell you, it goes way deeper than this. It's, and you're probably still somewhat disconnected because of the difficulty of taking the, these colors and stuff and moving across camera. I'm still working on that. But um, this is a very powerful way to work with text. And you will find if you do this, the same thing that, that Tom and the two Sandras found which was that there was an awful lot of um, conversation and 
uh, thought going on and serious processing of the text. They didn't just sit there and kind of fall asleep as they turn the pages. They were moving about and thinking all the time. So it's a, it's a powerful format to use. And I, I think it should be used for certainly at all levels. I've, I've worked with preschoolers in the United States and they've had conversations about picture books, like where the wild things are, that kind of thing, you know, hats for sale. And um, they've had conversations that a second grade teacher would, would just kill to get. <laughs> and I've had conversations with three-year-olds that are just stunning. Mm -hmm. And they just dive right in and they know what to do. And this, it's, this is the power of the scroll. Well, it, it's been absolutely fascinating hearing about this in more detail, and and I think what I've what I've been most engaged with is the whole person involved in the text. It, it's not just a reader, a passive reader; it's an active human engagement with a text. And um, I, I love it. I mean, I'm a convert. Um, I, <laughs> I I'm going to try this myself because um, it it makes perfect sense to me. Um, I think it's great. So we really, really appreciate you coming along today and, and showing us this and, and talking about it. And I hope it will inspire plenty of other people as well. There. I think this is a good start, but I'm just going to walk you over to this last, uh, last, this last piece, the coda. It says Dave Middlebrook is one of our co-authors and, ex and has experimented extensively with scrolls, and he is interested in further projects with academic staff to explore the potential of scrolls in university learning and reading. Please check his website for further details, www.textmapping.org. Uh, please be kind and understand a, a nice nifty new site will be coming along as I'm coding it uh, to, right now, but um, uh, it's an old website, but you can get started with it. And uh, uh, please reach out to me, uh, dmiddlebrook at textmapping.org. You, you can find that all over my, my website. My, that's my email address, and I'm looking to co uh, collaborate as with many, as many people as possible, especially in AG and in the UK would be great. So thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it.